All right, welcome to the live session of the grade nine math exam review in Ontario. I'm just going to go over a couple examples. Uh, I think I've got about nine examples. It's going to last about half an hour. Um, I'll probably finish before then. And at the end, if you have any questions, you can let me know. If I have time, I'll answer them. Uh, otherwise, I will try to make little short videos to answer them later. And if you missed the live session and you have a question, you can let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you later on that. Mm -hmm. So first, we're going to start with a subbed mass. So here's question one. And in this question, we want to follow the rules for bed mass. So we're going to deal with the bracket first. And inside that bracket, we have another bracket. So let's deal with that. We'll leave the square bracket as, I, as it is. 6 squared is going to be 36 plus 3. And we won't do anything else yet. OK. Next, we can deal with these brackets further. 36 plus 3 is 39. Once we have that, we can drop the brackets, at least those inner brackets anyways. And that will be all squared. OK, sorry, just had an error message pop up, but I think we're OK. So let's continue. So 39 divided by 13 is going to be 3. And then 3 squared is 9. Make sure you're following that correct order for a bed mass or PEMDAS or whatever it is uh, you've learned. All right, so our next example, we have fractions. People don't like fractions, and this one has mixed fractions in it. And to be honest, um, so in high school, we prefer to use improper fractions. So let's fix that. So we're going to take that 5, multiply it by the 2, which gives 10, and add it to the 4. So we're going to have 14. The denominator is going to stay the same, 5. Next, we're going to divide by, again, we usually don't use the division sign. Um, in high school, we prefer writing everything as a fraction, even if it's a fraction of a fraction. Uh, but that's fine. This negative will leave there for now, because it's a negative number. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So minus 10 over 3. Now what we can do... In order to divide fractions, what we're going to do is change the division to a multiplication. And I'm going to flip the fraction or take the reciprocal of the fraction. So that leaves us with a negative. It's still a negative number, but it's going to be 3 over 10. All right, so once we're done with that, we have 14 times negative 3, which is going to be minus 42 and 5 times 10, which is 50. And you can immediately see those are both even numbers, so you can divide top and bottom by 2 uh, to reduce it to minus 21 over 25. Okay. All right. Oh, hello. I just saw hi in the chat. Hi. <laughs> All right, so let's do some more examples. We'll go on to these ones, getting a little bit more complicated now. So this one, you need to remember your exponent laws. So for your exponent laws, let's look at the numerator. First, we'll deal with the coefficient. So 8 times 4, so that's just going to be 32. Then we have, look at b, look at your common bases. So let's compare this b multiplied with this b. Now, by itself just means to the power of 1, but we usually don't write 1. So b cubed times b to the 1. When you're multiplying variables with a common base, you add the exponents. So 3 plus 1 would be 4. So b to the 4. Then we have d, again, to the power of 1. And d squared. Add those exponents, we get d cubed. Now, in our, our denominator, we need to follow bed mass. We have to take this exponent before we distribute that 2 into the brackets. Let's leave that 2 out. And if we square everything in the bracket, we get 2 squared is 4, b squared, d squared. And then we can multiply that 2 in. So let's just leave the numerator as is. And our denominator becomes 2 times 4, which is 8, b squared, 
d squared. All right, so 30, 32 divided by 8 is a 4. And now when we are dividing uh, common bases, you subtract the exponent. So 4 minus 2 is 2, so we get b squared. And 3 minus 2 is 1, so d to the power of 1, or just d. All right, let's try this one. This one, we have a negative out in front here. So we need to distribute that negative into every single term inside the bracket. Okay, so that, what that means is every single term is going to have its sign changed. This one is essentially a positive one out in front, so we can just drop the brackets. So we have 2m squared plus m plus 12 and then minus 3m squared minus 4m and then that negative 6 becomes positive 6 because we have a double negative. Now we just collect like terms. So we have an m squared and a m squared. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Then over here we have m and minus 4m. So that's minus 3m. And then finally we have a 12 and a 6. So plus 18. Okay. All right, let's go to the next question if everyone's okay. Five and six, we're going to be solving equations. So similar steps, but now we have an equation. So first, question five, we need to distribute that two into the bracket and do the same for the nine. So this will give us 2d plus 12 is equal to 9d minus 9. Okay, so what I can do now is collect, maybe bring that 2 to the other side. So on this side, I'm left with a 12. And if I bring the 9 over to the other side, I have to add 9 to both sides. So I take the opposite sign and I go plus 9. Here I have 9d, but when I bring that 2d over, take the opposite sign, because we have to subtract it from both sides, minus 2d. Okay, so 12 plus 9 gives us 21 equals 7d. Now 7 is being multiplied by d, so to undo that, that multiplication, we do the opposite operation. We divide, so it goes away, and we do it on both sides of the equation. So we get... 3 equals d. Okay. All right. Next, uh, we've got fractions. I know a lot of people don't like fractions, so why don't we just get rid of them? Right? To do that, we can sort of cross multiply. We can bring that 2, because essentially we can just multiply both sides of the equation by 2. And it comes up there to be 2 times 3d. And we can do the same with the 4. But if we're going to do that, uh, the 4 needs to be multiplied by both d plus 4. So just to make it easier so we don't make mistakes, we're going to add those brackets. So we have 4 times d plus 4. Now we can distribute that 4. So we get 4d plus 16 equals distribute the 2. 60. Subtract 4d from both sides, we get 16 equals 6d minus 4d. I'm just going to continue up here. And we have 16, forgot the d, equals 2d. And then divide both sides by 2. So we get 8 equals d. Okay. Hope everyone can hear me better. I'm using different equipment from the last live, so I hope it's better. Let's do some more questions then. Now we have to graph. Okay, it's getting a little bit more interesting here. So this equation is in the form of y equals mx plus b, the most important equation in grade 9 math. Our m tells us the slope and our b tells us the y-intercept. So in this example, 
you can see that the slope, which is m, is equal to 2, and the y-intercept is equal to negative 4. So let's graph that. Just do a rough sketch here. Y-intercept being negative 4, so maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, about here. There's the y-intercept. And a slope of 2. So slope is rise over run. So what we can do is go up 2 and then over 1. You only need to do that once because once you have two points, you have a line. But if you wanted to continue, you can go up 2 and over 1 and just connect them in a line. And there's your graph. And then we usually put arrows on both ends just to indicate that that line goes off forever in both directions. All right, now this example again, we have a line, but instead of being given the equation, we need to determine the equation. So the equation we want is y equals mx plus b. So I need both the slope and the y-intercept. So to get the slope, we're given two points on the line. We can use this equation, which you learn in grade nine, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's our rise, our up and down, our vertical components, and that is our run, our horizontals. Now it doesn't really matter which one you label. I'll label this as y2 and this one as y1, and therefore this will have to be x2 and this will be x1. So if I just plug these numbers in, we're going to get 5 minus negative 4, so we got a double negative there, all over 2 minus 3. So this gives us 9 in the numerator and negative 1 in the denominator, which reduces to negative 9. So there's our slope. Now what we need, so I can just rewrite this as y equals minus 9x plus b. Now I need that b. As long as I have any point on the line, I can solve for it. I actually have two points on the line. Just pick one and substitute in for x and y. So let's do the 2 and 5, because I don't like negative numbers. Let's do 2 and 5. So y is 5, so I'm going to replace y with 5. It was minus 9, and x is 2. And then we have that plus b. Okay, so minus 9 times 2 is minus 18 plus b. If I add 18 to both sides of the equation, we will end up with b equals to 18 plus 5, which is 23. So now we can write our equation as y equals uh, the slope m minus 9x plus b, the y-intercept 23. Okay. Doing all right? I'm kind of whizzing through this because no questions, but all right. <laughs> okay. This is the last question I have planned. Um, but find the area and perimeter of this triangle. So perimeter means we need to add up all the sides. We don't know what this side is. Okay, but this is a right angle triangle, and we have the equation for a right angle triangle where the hypotenuse, let's label the hypotenuse as C, and the sides, doesn't matter which, but A and B. We have our Pythagorean theorem, which is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we can apply this formula. This would be A. So we would have A squared plus B would be this side, 4.2 squared, equals C, which is our longest side, the hypotenuse, 5.4 squared. So to find A, you can subtract 4.2 squared from both sides of the equation. So we got 5.4 squared minus 4.2 squared. And then to figure out what A is, we take the square root of both sides. Make sure you do this, otherwise you're not solving for a, you're solving for a squared, right? 
which wouldn't be the length of that side, it would be the area of a squared with length of that side. So take the square root of both sides, we plug that into our calculators, and we'll get 3.2. So we know this is 3.2. So now we can figure out our perimeter. Perimeter is just adding up uh, the sides along the exterior. So we have 5.4 plus 4.2 plus 3.2 and we get a perimeter of 13. There should be units here, uh, let's just say meters, let's make them all meters. So 13 meters. Find the area. Okay, the area of a triangle is essentially half the area of the rectangle that that triangle would make. Because see, you can see here we have two of those triangles, one here and then one there. So if we just do a length times the width to find the triangle, then we just divide that by two. So we'll do 3.2 meters times 4.2 meters and divide that by two we get an area of 7.1, and our units will be meters. Meters times meters is meters squared. Okay. So has that helped? Does anyone have any questions? If you have no questions now, that's fine. If you have questions later, you can just, um. This does get put onto my YouTube channel, so you can find the video and then ask questions in the comments. All right, then. If there's no questions, I will see everyone later. I hope this helped. Bye.